the Buddha gave his first summary of the teaching in the Ovala Patimokkha. The first point was about patient endurance. It's a part of the practice that most of us don't like, as the John Mahabhu used to say. People keep coming to him and ask, what's a quick and easy way to develop patience? And he said, you develop patience through patience. You have to accept the fact that it's not going to be quick and it's not going to be easy. But the important thing is you learn that you can make it easier for yourself. Because if simple patience on its own could take people to awakening, as a John Cha once pointed out, all the chickens in the world would have been awakened before human beings, because they could sit very patiently on their eggs for long hours. It's patience and sitting with pain, either physical pain or mental pain, but asking yourself questions. What am I doing to contribute to this? After all, that's what the First Noble Truth is all about. What we're adding to the situation that's making it painful. In the Buddha's own life story, this story of how he gained awakening, you know, he didn't have a teacher. There was nobody to give him Dharma talks. Everything he had to ex explore on his own. And his exploration was this. He'd find that he was suffering from something and ask himself, what am I doing that's causing that suffering? And why do I do it? Why don't I give it up? So it's looking for what you're doing. That's adding an unnecessary bur burden. That's what makes patience easier and makes it productive. If you don't ask those questions, it, everything just goes past and the suffering is just there and it's totally pointless. It's when you ask the questions. Here's a pain in the body, here's something painful in the mind. What in here is unnecessary? And specifically, what am I doing that's unnecessary? What are my actions that are contributing to this? As the Buddha once said, our primary reaction to pain is twofold. One, we're bewildered by it, and two, we want to know is there someone who knows a way or two to get out of this pain. Of course, the bewilderment leads to ignorance, which usually creates more pain so that we look for a way out in the wrong way. As little children, we get used to having other people take the pain away for us. And as we grow up, sometimes we develop a bad habit of looking for somebody else to take care of the pain. And if nobody's paying attention to us, we just add some more pain on until it becomes really obvious that we're suffering and we hope somebody will have some compassion. And this works up to a point. And then it reaches a point where other people don't want to help anymore. So you're thrown back on yourself. And of course, ultimately, you're the only one who can cure the problem. Now what you want is someone who can teach you how to cure the problem for yourself. And that's what the Buddha's Four Noble Truths are all about. The Buddha was unique in his time. And then he focused on the question of pain, suffering, stress. That's what the word dukkha is, as the main issue in his teaching. And it's interesting that he never tried to define it. He didn't try to pin it down. You see some of the commentaries that try to define dukkha based on etymology. It's either a, a hub of the wheel that's not quite on right, or it's a bad space. But that doesn't really help. The Buddha's way of dealing with pain was just to list all the different ways of pain manifests itself, and then pointed out the handle you can get on it in every case where pain is weighing down the mind. It's because of clinging. It's an activity of the mind that causes the pain. Of course, there are 
causes for physical pain out there, but the fact that there's a pain in the body that weighs on the mind, the weighing on the mind, comes from your own cl clinging. And you're clinging to five different activities, and any one of the aggregates form the way you create the sense of your body, inhabit the sense of your body, feeling, feeling tones of pleasure, pain, neither pleasure nor pain, perceptions, the labels you put on things, either words or images, fabrication, the thoughts you create around things, and then finally consciousness, which is aware of all this. These are all activities that you're engaged in. And they're all the things that make the pain weigh on the mind. So regardless of what your pain is or how you experience it, the Buddha's not so much concerned with defining it, but pointing out the aspect of the pain, the aspect of the pain that you can focus on that can help you get past it. And again, it comes down to that question, what am I doing? How am I relating to this in a way that is harmful? Now, to see this, you have to be willing to sit with it. This is what the patience is for. You can't expect to have one brief moment of pain and then suddenly get a great insight into it. You have to sit with it long enough so that the mind starts showing its true stripes, the stories it tells itself about the pain, the complaints, the thrashing around. You look for that, and then you ask yourself, why? Why am I doing this? It's kind of like a talking cure. You have to get something out of the mind, some statement, some admission. Okay, I'm holding on to this because of that old habit, which seemed to work some time way in the past. And I've kept that habit around, but here it is stabbing me. Do I need it anymore? You say, well, I like it. It's like a menagerie you have. But look what you've got in your menagerie. You've got some lions and tigers, and every now and then they get in a foul mood and they turn around and they bite you. So do you want, do you want to keep feeding them, or do you, have, you, have you had enough? As you sit patiently with the pain and ask questions about it, you can find your way out. So this is why we sit for meditation, do it again and again and again, sit long enough so that some pain comes up and you can deal with it. You can look at it, see what your mind is going to do to complain. And as long as there's at least part of you that's not willing to go along, the part that, as with the Buddha, says, why am I doing this? Haven't I had enough? And see what the mind has to say. It'll have a lot of excuses and a lot of ways of justifying its habits to itself. And there'll be kind of an of-courseness to its statements. And you have to learn how to question that. John Mahabu gives a good set of questions. You're sitting with pain, and you ask yourself, is the pain the same thing as the part of the body that's pained? And there'll be a part of the mind that says, yeah, there's a pain right there on the knee. There's a pain right there on the hips. But you ask yourself, is the pain the same sort of thing as the body? Pain is a feeling tone. The body is just the elements. How can they possibly be the same? Can you see the distinction? So that the of courseness of the mind's answer begins to seem not so of course after all. It actually starts to seem fairly arbitrary. Or well, the same with your awareness. There's a feeling tone and there's your awareness. Is the feeling tone the same thing as the awareness? Awareness is aware. Feeling tones are not aware. Just something there. Can you see this distinction? Now this requires you get the mind really quiet. So it can see these things. And if there's part of the mind that keeps complaining, this is unpleasant, this is taking too long, realize that that's part of the problem right there, that voice. 
that wants to push things and get things over with. You've got to learn which members of your menagerie are ones that are actually helpful to you and which ones are causing problems. And if they're causing problems, why are you feeding them? Send them off. These are not animals that have to be cared for. They're animals that once you stop feeding them, they just go away. They disappear, and that's it. So try to develop the attitude that you're up for learning to be patient, and you're willing to put in some time. It's that willingness that makes all the difference. And what pushes you in that direction? Well, the fact that if you don't develop that willingness, you're just going to have to keep suffering the pain over and over again. So which are you willing to do? As the Buddha said in his first statement in the Awada Padimokkha, patient endurance is the foremost austerity. It's the austerity that forces you to look at these things carefully. If you keep running away, well, it'll chase you like your shadow. If you turn around and look at it carefully, you can start sorting things out. So, as the Buddha said with the Four Noble Truths, you've got to learn how to comprehend your suffering, you've got to comprehend your pain. That means developing all the qualities you can muster to sit with it. This is why we develop right concentration, so there's at least a sense of well-being in the mind as you look with the pain. In other words, once you accept the pain and accept that it's something you really do want to see through, okay, muster the willingness to develop all the qualities of mind, the concentration, the mindfulness, that can strengthen your patience. And then start asking some of those questions. What am I doing here that's unnecessary, that's adding to pain? Now, how can I stop? It's in the questioning that you learn how to burn these things away. The patience on its own doesn't, doesn't do it, but we do need to develop a lot more patience than we already have. 